we're going to be discussing antique inkwells. Um, a couple of weeks ago, I did a show on antique candlesticks, candle holders. I didn't know how popular that would be. Uh, it seems like a fairly narrow category, but I got a lot of very positive response on it. So I thought I'd try again to pick a category where there might not be that many people who collect inkwells. Uh, there are some, for sure. And we'll uh, discuss in the show tonight some of the characteristics of the category and what people look for. But I think, too, that inkwells, like candle holders, um, exhibit substantial variety. And we've, I'll be talking about some of the various uh, the varieties of, can of inkwells here tonight. Uh, in addition to which, I think that you can collect and you can like and you can have inkwells whether or not you're a collector of that particular category or not, just as with candle holders. You might like to just have them around. Desk accessories is a broader category of which, of course, inkwells um, has a part. And um, were I able to find here in the Antique Ball, the Brass Armadillo in, in Denver, good examples of the rest of the, the things that go into desk collect collectibles. Uh, I would have included that in the show. I couldn't. The inkwells that I did find, uh, there are three of them that actually belong to me, and one I did find here in the mall. Uh, but we're at, after I've discussed the ones that I've been able to find here, we're going to put up online some of the, uh, some of the ones that I pulled off eBay uh, to expand what we're going to be looking at, as well as to look at prices current eBay prices for those particular items and there there are some really exceptional ones now being offered for sale on eBay in fact a couple of them are in uh, not buy it nows but they're actually in an au in auction and so we don't know the final price but you could look it up after that's after after it concludes of course so um, inkwells we think of I think most of the collectible inkwells that you're going to find are going to be what they call turn of the century um, and uh, they're made in a variety, many different countries. The first one we're going to look at, this one I believe is German. It has a mark, and we'll put the mark up on the uh, screen for you, um, just in case maybe you recognize the, the mark. It's, it's basically illegible. This is a, an inkwell that I, I think is probably German. It has a stag's head, probably elk. This has uh, the two original uh, wells or glass inserts. Oftentimes, of course, these are lost. If you, if you might be able to find, if you have one, uh, one that doesn't have uh, the, uh, the insert, you might be able to find one that would fit. It won't be original, obviously, and it might not be the exact one, but you might be able to find one on eBay, and I would suggest that that's, a, that's one possibility. Another thing is that if you have an antiques mall in your neighborhood, like this one here in Denver, occasionally you do find people who do have the glass inserts. Sometimes they don't know what they are. Uh, they have them out for sale. It's a, it's a hit and miss to find the exact uh, right size, but anyway, that's a possibility. Having the glass inserts does add to the value. Um, and uh, in this uh, this one is priced at $285. So this this one, I would say, is might be a little earlier than, say, turn of the century. Not much. It's circa 1900. Might be a little bit before. Could be a few years after. Most of these that we're looking at are going to be the same. Um, and it's it's heavy. It has a copper color. Um, many of the uh, uh, of the ink inkwells are me metallic, and they come in a variety of different metals. Sometimes it doesn't really matter all that much what specifically the metal is. Bronze, you might think maybe a little bit more expensive if it's bronze, but then you have to really be careful about the patina, and we'll talk about that when I put up, after we've looked at these four, uh, one that's up online on eBay at the moment. Uh, brass, this one's brass. Uh, there again, brass is a surface that uh, takes polish same as sterling silver or silver plate, so they can be uh, made to look better. Uh, but a lot of the a lot of the ink wells, as well as a lot of the other metal objects, turn of the century, 
are of a metal that you can't really know, you don't really know what it is. It's, they're often lumped into a category called pot metal. Uh, and I don't think that matters a lot, with, uh, with the possible exception of bronze. And uh, we'll, we'll talk about that, because one of these is a pot metal piece. We'll come to that in a moment. So in terms of values of the four that I have here, this one is the, the most expensive. It's the most elaborate. It's $280, uh, $285. There might be uh, some uh, geographic difference in values from wherever you are, but I think this is a motif that goes really well here in the Rocky Mountain West. And that's why I think that, uh, that I'll probably be able to sell this for the $285. Uh, it so happens that a lot of the people who have second homes, who have cabins up in the, in the mountains here, uh, a lot of their homes are furnished with, in fact, antiques that come from Europe. Alpine areas, Bavaria, Austria, Switzerland, that sort of thing. And, um, and so while you might not find that many American things of this period that do relate and would fit into the decor in a mountain home, there are European ones that do. This one, I think, would, be, would do well. And uh, we just brought it in, so we'll see how that goes at $285. The one in front of it is, a, is really quite unusual. I'll open that up and show you. And the first thing you'll notice is there is no glass insert in it. If you were just looking at that and you were walking past it, you might not recognize that as being an, an inkwell. You might not know exactly what it was. But on opening it, you'll see this, this requires a glass insert. We don't have it. Uh, it's very attractive. Another element about this one is you might think that it's sterling silver because the silver is in really good condition. A lot of silver plate that you might see has had uh, some of the, the plate worn away. And, um, but in this case, there are really no telltale signs of this being silver plate, but take my word for it, it is. If it were sterling, it would be really, really valuable. It's not. And in fact, it has a kind of design that's unusual. And here again, I'm asking for your help if you happen to recognize this, because I don't. I've asked several people here, uh, fellow dealers, and uh, they have thought, well, maybe it's an oriental design. I'm not so sure about that. You know, it, it almost looks like some of the, the Gorham designs of, um, of sterling. But as I say, this is silver plate. This is priced at $95. And uh, I, both of these pieces just came into the mall. I expect this will, will sell really quickly. Uh, it's coming into Christmas, great Christmas gift. It looks really, really nice. And um, the fact that it is not sterling means that it's a lot less, the price is a lot less than it would be if it were sterling. In fact, it's in the price range probably that would serve as a kind of Christmas gift. So I, if you... The, the design is a kind of, well, you, you can see this, it must be swans, or it's a, it's a bird and flowing design. So it's Art Nouveau, this is an Art Nouveau piece. This is similar in date to this, the first inkwell we looked at. Maybe a little later, this is, I'd say, probably circa 1910, maybe 1915. And uh, so it's, it's an antique, silver plate, inkwell without the glass insert and this one's $95. The next one let's have a look at this one. Here again we've got uh, yeah. a piece that is clearly Art Nouveau in style. Um, this has a mark. The first this one does, is not marked. This one has a mark. Uh, the mark is I'll pick it up and show you here. It's uh, K and Company. K and Company is an American, or was an American company out of New Jersey, out of uh, Weehawken, New, uh, New Jersey. It was Kronheimer, Oldenbush, and Company. So this one's German. This I don't know. This one is American. Uh, the, the company, Kronheimer, Oldenbush, their mark is the mark that you're looking at. It's a K and Co. 
uh, it was a company in existence for quite some time, but you can tell from styling on this piece that it is uh, Art Nouveau circa 1910. Uh, this is not one that I own. The price on this one is $95. Uh, I tried taking the top off this, and I'm not going to try any harder. I can't get it off. Anyway, uh, there probably is a way to get the top off. Clearly, it does have the glass insert, and that is inserted in there. It's held in place. Uh, and it's, so these are these are exactly the same price. Uh, they're they're both ninety five dollars. What do you think about the different the difference? Which would you rather have? This one has the advantage of being of having a mark and has the advantage of being American. That might be a slight advantage. This has the advantage of being in a much nicer surface, more elaborate, and certainly a, mo a more unusual style and design. So take your choice. Uh, the fourth one here is also an American piece, and this is a Bradley and Hubbard uh, inkwell. I'll show you that we do not have, this is actually mine, we do not have the, the glass insert for, uh, for this inkwell. We don't have the well. Um, this is obviously larger than either one of those two pieces. It's comparable in size here. This is obviously brass. Bradley and Hubbard uh, is one of the more famous American manufacturing companies turn of the century. They actually began in the 1850s and they carried on uh, up until I think the 1950s. But this dates clearly from that same period, circa 1910, 1915. The mark uh, has uh, the model number on it. It has the Bradley and Hubbard mark and then the model number is 3183. You'll see these around. This is, this is uh, not a unique design. None of them are, are unique. But there are examples of this around. Um, Bradley and Hubbard is a company in, uh, from Meriden, Connecticut. If you've watched shows that I've done before, you may recognize that name of that town. It's also the home of the Handel Company. So Philip Handel was uh, in operation at the same time as Bradley and Hubbard in the same relatively small town in Connecticut, Meriden, Connecticut. Bradley and Hubbard is justly famous primarily for its lamps, um, same as Handel. But they did a whole line of, of different products. Uh, Bradley and Hubbard was a household name at the time that this piece was made. Uh, they were sold, uh, things like this were sold in department stores like Sears and Montgomery Wards and other higher end uh, department stores. I do believe actually that uh, there was a, uh, that uh, Bradley and Hubbard uh, products were also sold by traveling salesmen uh, out of catalogs. So uh, this one, what do I got? This one is priced at $95, lo and behold. We've got three $95 uh, inkwells here. Take your choice. Um, obviously, this bigger, more attractive, uh, this more unusual. This has got its mark for the American made. So does this one. All three of those are $95. This one is $285. It's a little bit over the top. And, um, and obviously, I think, because it's mine, you know, priced appropriately. But just to compare the prices here with things that I've shown you, I thought it would be um, instructive to look in online at some of the some of the antique inkwells that are currently being offered for sale and selling on eBay. The first one, let's pull up the first one, it's an uh, antique Eastlake, I'm going to read you the title, Antique Eastlake 1879 inkwell engraved black cast iron with glass well. This is a buy it now for $49. Uh, it's Victorian. It's got a hinged round top, three pin holders on the top. You can see that. They go across horizontally. It's, pa it's patent date is 1879. Doesn't mean that it was made in 1879, but it's 
patented at that point, so therefore it's a style definitely of Victorian, and it's probably close in date. It's five and three quarters inches wide, four and a half inches long, and four and three quarters inches tall. And this one is priced at only $49 with $10 shipping. So this one is substantially less. It's about half the price of these three $95 inkwells. It looks nice to me. It's, uh, it's black cast iron. So I don't know. Uh, you know, beauty's in the eye of the beholder. Probably this is less expensive for one reason being the material, that it's black cast iron. It's hard to envisage, but if you have like a desk or desk accessories, how is that going to sit or fit on your desk? I think it actually is quite a good price, and I think it's, it actually looks very nice to me. Size-wise, let's just say five and three quarters inches wide so probably about that wide, uh, maybe maybe that tall, and the length, and this way a little about the same. So it's going to be roughly this size with a little bit, a little bit higher. Anyway, so there's an example of uh, what's available on eBay. Uh, Forty-nine dollars, ten dollars shipping. Let's put up the next one. The next one, title of this one, Rare Antique French Peacock Inkwell, signed A. Chauvin, no reserve. So the uh, owner uh, on the listing here started this at a very low price with no reserve, and he's gotten substantial bids. Uh, the current bid on this inkwell is $71. There have been 33 bids. So there are a number of people that are, have expressed showing an interest in this particular inkwell. Uh, this one is five and a quarter inches high, a little bigger than the last one. It's seven and three eighths inches long. Maybe it's as long as this and five and a quarter inches going the other direction. So this peacock inkwell is substantially larger than the Victorian inkwell that we just looked at, the cast iron. Um, and this one, I'll, ju I'll just uh, read you, that's, it's, this has got a, a kind of bronze patina. So evaluate for yourself as you look at this image, because being bronze, the patina is really critical because you're not going to be able to improve the patina if it is ever ruined. Um, having original patina on a bronze item, no matter what, is really important to value. And people here are clearly liking this, uh, this inkwell. I can understand it. I don't know who A. Chauvin is. I think he's right. It's French. And it has that really nice peacock uh, design. So here's, an, uh, here's one that's fairly large. It's probably as large as either one of these two. It's got the peacock design. Unfortunately, at this point, we don't know what it's going to sell for. But there's obviously very substantial interest in this at having already received 33 bids. So um, this one has four more days left to run. And uh, next week's show, I'll tell you how much this one actually went for. Um, what would you think? That's kind of an interesting idea, too. If you were an inkwell buyer, and you've looked at the prices here, and you've looked at that first, uh, the one we looked at, the cast iron, would you be in on this one? Would you be in at $72? You need to go up a dollar if you're going to beat the current bid on this Peacock inkwell. And if you would go to 72, how high would you go? So we'll just do a little, a little test. Uh, think in your own mind about what you think this peacock inkwell, this French inkwell, would go for. What would you be willing to pay, and what do you think it'll go for? I'll do the same, and then we can compare notes. I could, uh, my guess is that this inkwell is going to sell for 
at least $120. We won't know until Saturday, and uh, I'll tell you in next week's show. Um, I'm just going to put that in writing so no one will think. But I'm saying it's going for at least $120, and we'll see uh, next week. So let's put up the next inkwell. Uh, this is the, uh, the third one of, from eBay. This is a fixed price, buy it now item. Antique 19th century Russian nickel plated bronze inkwell uh, with two headed eagle. Do you like this one? Um, I'll read you the description that the vendor puts out. 19th century Russian nickel plated bronze. It's kind of strange, isn't it? I mean, you wouldn't expect bronze to be plated. It's not like I mentioned before when he talks about metals. I don't think that that's a determining factor to value. And it really doesn't matter if it's plated what the underlying metal is, but I doubt if it's bronze. Inkwell with ink blotter. The inkwell measures approximately eight inches long, okay, by one and a half inches high. So this one is long but not high. There's a blotter that they're selling with it, five and seven eighths inches by three and three eighths inches by one and three quarter inches. The condition of both pieces is very good with minor age and wear from handling. The inkwell's missing the glass inserts. The opening of its inserts is so and so. The blotter needs new blotting paper. Fine casting with double-headed eagle on both pieces. No manufacturing marks. Excellent antique item. I think it's attractive. I, I think it's nice. Um, as far as we can see, the, the surface is good. It's a it's plate. Uh, and uh, so it's it's not as high. It's, more it's flatter they're saying it's russian it might well be russian i don't know it's not marked the the, the design of the double-headed e uh, eagle that's nice i think the overall design is also nice it's got the scrolls etc reminds me more of not 19th century but maybe early 20th century here again this fits into the same time frame as the other inkwells that we've been um, that we've been talking about and this one is $89 and the shipping cost varies from wherever you are so this this one actually is in a you know the same price range as these three pieces here that are $95 in the store um, and this is a buy it now so you could go on eBay and buy this now so think about for yourself, what would you do? Would you rather have one of these three or would you rather have that one? They're all basically uh, the same price. The last one we'll put up on the screen now. This last one is really, really quite special and I saved it for last because I think it's the best one we've got. Antique Victorian inkwell with scale, desk set ornate brass scrolled here's here's the photograph of it this is also in an ebay auction an auction ongoing there's one day rema uh, remaining on this one uh this is there have been 10 bids on this piece it's priced now at 178 dollars and 50 cents uh, let me give you the dimensions uh, the, the, the vendor is saying that it's English. Two of the three weights having British hallmarks. One of the two ounce weights is a W&T Avery limited piece and the smallest one has markings. Undecipherable combination of glass, brass and walnut really gives this item a special feel. It's 12 inches across and nine inches the other direction. So it's large, it's larger than any of these inkwells we've considered up until now. And it has the added dimension, it's not just an inkwell, it's a scale. Really unusual, I don't know that I've ever seen one that has combined those two features before. Um, and, you know, I think you could make the case that 
that's functional to have them both in the same piece. If, if you have a desk, you might, you might want to weigh something like a letter, whatever. Uh, good condition, very nice. And so we've got one day left on this one. Let's do the same little uh, game that we played with the other eBay auction item. This is currently priced at $178.50. Shipping is $18. So we're right, we're closing in on $200 combined cost for this one at present, but there's still one day left. So let's just make another guess. You can make your guess, I'll guess mine of what this ultimately is going to go for. I think it's going to go higher. I think it's going to go to around 250 maybe. OK, and uh, next week's show, I'll tell you how they came out. Uh, that puts this one in the same category price-wise as this one that I have here um, at the mall. And as I mentioned, some of the element regarding this pricing is the that here in the Rocky Mountain area, this particular kind of design with a stag's head is going to be particularly appealing. Maybe not in your area would it be, in which case it might not sell for the $285 that I'm asking here.